So PDO names. When you click on the PDO names under the setting page, you will see pre-made PDO names in here. So if you your PDO for your company is not assigned here, then you can just create a new PDO name by clicking the green button here. Add PDO name. Select a PDO name. Uh, the PDO code is just optional. Then you can select whether it's paid, partial paid, or unpaid. Then once you're done, you just click on add. Then you will see it here. Now, if you want to just edit out the name for the particular PDO that is already been made for you, you just click on the edit button. Then you just replace the name as well as whether it's paid, partial paid, or unpaid. If you want to delete that PDO from your records, just click on delete. Then click OK. Then you're done. If you want to just hide the PDO name, just click on Archive. And the same thing that happens when you go to the user, when you archive a user, you just click on Show Archive PDO Names and it will show up here. So in here, you can also delete or restore the hidden or archived uh, PDO names. Now let's go to the PDO accruals. So how to set it up? So it's not automatically set up for you, so you have to manually set it up first before we can automatically calculate the PDO accruals for you. So first you have to do is select the name of the employee that you wish to add a PDO accrual. Let's say for example, the test employee here, I want to add a vacation accrual. You just click on edit for the frequency. So this is where you may be able to um, select how the PDO rate will be calculated so if you select daily and how many hours the employee has worked for a year let's say for example your employees work 90 hours per year so that means this is the calculation so for every day your employee will earn 0 0.2466 of hours of PDO accrual hours for 90 hours work per year so this 0 0.2466 will be awarded every day for that employee since that carry over date so let's say for example the employee started at January 1 you just click that one then the calculation will begin on January 1 so when you click save click OK you'll see here the calculation so in this case the employees work 30 days since January 1 with the rate of 0 0.2466 PDO accrual rate per day, so that means the total hours the employees accrued for the 38 days of working is 9 hours, 0.3708. So that will be the balance for that employee. So the same calculation applies to monthly, only as the name suggests it's monthly calculation, yearly calculation, if you want it to be based on hours of work. So this will, base, this will be based on the record the employee is clocked in or clocked out so just select award two hours for every 40 hours work so this means uh, this is the calculation for every hour your employee will gain 0 0.05 PDO accrual hours so when you click a save the calculation will change since there's no clock in or clock out time recorded yet so there's zero hours work for the rate of 0 0.05 per hour. You can also manually input it instead. So you just click on manually answered, click on manage, add hours for the employee manually. Let's say for example, 100 complementary for hard work. So you will see here in the balance, it changed to 100, right? So if you want to deduct hours, let's say for example, the employee has requested some time off PDO, you just click on this minus hours, just select how many hours to be deducted, click add. And you will see it's automatically deducted. So you can click OK, that means um, your managing is done. But if you want it to be automatically calculated by our system, click edit. The most commonly used is based on hours work. To select how many hours you will award the employee for hours for 40 hours of work so the rate will be 0 0.1 hours for each hours work 
So if you have remainder um, PDO from last year or last period, you can just put it in the carryover hours. So when you click save, that employee will already have 10 PDO accruals, 10 hours of PDO accruals, and the calculation will be displayed here. So that's how it goes with the PDO names and the PDO accruals. For the jobs, so let's say for example your company is an office company. Okay, so let's add jobs. So the same thing, you just click on the green button which says add job, create a job name. Let's say um, you just select whether it's a paid, partial paid, or unpaid. Select the job code and then click add. Then it will automatically be here. So if you want to delete that job name, you just click on delete. If you want to edit it out instead of deleting it and creating a new one, just click edit. Change the name, change the, if it's paid, partial paid, or unpaid, then click save. Or if you want to just hide it, just click archive. Then if you want to see it again, show archive jobs, either delete or unarchive it. For the job assignment, so this is where you assign the jobs to your employees. So you can either select it or assign it per user. You can view it by user or by job, so it will just um go vice versa so the user is on the left side when you're view by user then you will see all the jobs that have been assigned to that users on the right side or view by job so you will see all the jobs available on the left side and all the users that have been assigned to that job on the right side you can also select whether it's for um, particular departments only so the same thing you can view it by job or by department or you can just automatically assign it to all users and do not forget to click save changes after you're done the changes now let's move on to the shifts so let's say your company has multiple shifts all right you click click on the green button again that says add shift click it select a shift name Again, the code is just optional. Set the start time and stop time. Now we have restrictions available below. The first restriction is auto clock out minutes after shift end. So this is if you want your employees to not have an NA on their time cards. Let's say for example, they forgot to clock out. Then you can just use this restriction instead. So when you um, enable this restriction you select how many minutes until then the employee can clock out by themselves but after that minute is reached then that employee's account will automatically be clocked out let's say for example the stop time is 5 p.m. and you set this one up to 10 minutes after shift ends then by the time 510 arrives their accounts will automatically be clocked out. Now we have other restrictions here. So we have clock in and clock out restrictions. They're pretty much the same. It only applies um, as the name it suggests and clock in and clock outs. So for clock in restrictions, um, if you check the first box, the same thing as the clock out restriction. So when they clock in or clock out, earlier or later than the start time or stop time of their shift then it will still be automatically recorded as the actual start and stop time that was assigned to them so let's say for example i clock in at 7 30 it will be recorded at 8 a.m i clock out at 6 p.m it will automatically be recorded as 5 p.m for the second one if i check this option our restriction then this will prevent me to clock in earlier than the start time so it doesn't matter how early I arrive if you set the zero minutes before ship start time then if it's not 8 a.m. then I can't clock in yet 
if it's not 5 p.m. then it's I can clock out yet so that's just how you set up the shifts so you just select whichever ones um, the most applicable for your company then you just click and add and it should be good to go so the same thing if you want to edit out an already existing shift just click on the edit button here the same options will show up if you want to delete that shift just click on delete if you want to just hide that shift click archive if you have archive a shift just click show archive shifts it will show up here then you can select whether to delete it completely or unarchive it so you will see it back on your records here 